Parasites can be a problem on any farm, be it a small farm or a large farm. If you raise sheep, if you raise goats, or if you raise any livestock at all, we spend a lot of our time fighting, talking about, and educating ourselves on parasites. And specifically with sheep and goats, we spend an awful lot of time talking about the dreaded barber pole worm. But what about other worms? What about tapeworms? Are tapeworms really a problem? How do we treat them? Should we treat for them? It's a little bit more complicated than you might think, and some of the answers to these questions may actually surprise you. Stay tuned to find out more. Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. So if you followed any of our videos about the trifecta method of worming, you know that one of the first wormers that I start off with, with our youngsters, with those lambs and goat kids, is valbazin. And the reason for that is, is I wanna eliminate any potential tapeworm load before I move on to any of the clear wormers and start to work on things like barber pole worm. So getting rid of that tapeworm load is essential, especially when it comes to our youngsters. So this is the age group that I am concerned about when it comes to tapeworms. This animal is about three months old, and this is the prime time when we are gonna see tapeworms. You know, we don't see tapeworms too much in adults. They tend to develop natural immunity um, to tapeworms, and it's just not an issue. So she's not gonna cause me any problems. You know, she's too big, she's too old, she's developed natural immunity, but this little guy here is the one that I'm worried about. Now, are tapeworms really a problem that are gonna knock your animals back, knock them down, and cause a lot of problems like the barber pole worm? No, they're not. As a matter of fact, a majority of the time, tapeworms are what we call a subclinical parasite, and what that means essentially is, is they're gonna hang out in the animal's intestinal tract, they're gonna cause some problems, they may cause some diarrhea, they may cause some constipation, they may mess up the way that that animal absorbs and utilizes nutrients, but chances are it's not going to kill them. Why is this dangerous? Well, this is dangerous because you can have a parasite load in this animal that's causing problems that you can't see. That's that subclinical thing that we talk about. We've talked about this before with coccidia and how many of the coccidia infestations are subclinical. Again, they're costing you money, they're costing you feed, they're costing you your animal's health, but they're not quite bad enough that you can identify it. So before we get into talking a lot about how to treat them, I wanna take a few moments to talk to you about the tapeworm itself, how it's transmitted, and how this works. So we're out on the pasture, and what does this have to do with tapeworms? Well. This is where the intermediate lives that helps tapeworms get into your sheep and goats. There's actually mites that are out here that live on pasture. Thousands and thousands and thousands of mites that live out here on pasture. And these are an intermediary host that help tapeworms get passed on to your sheep and goats. What happens is an animal that is infested with tapeworms, such as a sheep or a goat, drop portions of that tapeworm in their feces that have thousands of eggs in them, it hits the soil, and then that feces is eaten by mites. These mites migrate up the stems of our grass and our alfalfa and our clover, and they're eaten by other animals, ingested, and then the life cycle starts all over again inside the sheep or the goat, those eggs, hatch out of those mites, they turn into tapeworms, the tapeworm segments fall off with eggs in them, and the whole cycle goes over and over and over again. So the question you might be asking is, what's the, what's the likelihood that these mites are gonna eat these and that the animal's gonna be infested? Well, scientists say that even if two to 3% of the mites that are on your pasture get exposed to tapeworm eggs, essentially, uh, that equates to each of your animals getting thousands and thousands of eggs that are ingested into their body. Now, the good news is, is as these animals age, they naturally tend to develop some resistance to tapeworms. And generally speaking, once we get animals that are 
two years of age and over, uh, we have no tapeworm issues with them at all. So the real is issue is, is to take care of your babies up to and about six months of age to one year of age and try to get them cleared out of tapeworms and just go from there. Now, there are other animals that can carry tapeworms and cause some issues for you. Barn cats are an issue when it comes to tapeworms. Basically, the way that they get them is mice and rodents that they tend to eat are infested with these mites and with tapeworms. The uh, cats eat them, then they get the tapeworms, then they excrete the tapeworms and it can get passed on that way as well. So a lot of livestock producers will tell you that although cats and barn cats especially are an important part of keeping rodent control under your thumb, they can put you at increased risk for tapeworms as well. So definitely something that you wanna think about. So now the question comes up of, okay, well, what's the best way to take care of these tapeworms? Now, I've spent a lot of time when we talk about the Lanessa Farms trifecta method, which you can see right here, talking about worming with copper sulfate. But you'll notice the Lanessa Farms trifecta method starts off with valbazin, then we move to injectable Dectamax, and then once we get those animals relatively free of worms, then we do our maintenance doses with the copper sulfate. Copper sulfate and clear wormers, such as ivermectin, Dectamax, and any of the other medications that are in the clear worming family do not work and are not effective against tapeworms. So you might be asking yourself, well, what did they used to do for tapeworms back in the day? I spent a lot of time telling you what they used to do for barber pole worms back in the day, and that's why we use the copper sulfate. The answer to what they used to use for tapeworms was special medication that falls in the nicotinic family, and those medications are not very safe at all and have a very small window of treatment that can put your animals at increased risk for just general health. So we don't use nicotinics, we don't go backwards. In that case, we do use the chemical wormers. Now, there are a couple white wormers here in the United States that are effective against tapeworms. Those two are Safeguard, Paniker, and also Valbazin. Valbazin has been shown to be far more aggressive and far more successful in treating tapeworms than the Paniker. So that is a safeguard, so that is what we go with. Things to keep in mind when using valbazin. I know we've been over this before, but it's very important for you to remember. We don't ever wanna use valbazin on any pregnant use or dose, especially in the first trimester. Scientific evidence states that in the first trimester, the use of valbazin uh, can cause some damage uh, potentially to the fetus. We could get some birth defects or spontaneous abortion. And that's definitely something that we don't wanna deal with. Now, the reality is, is you're probably not gonna be treating animals that are old enough to be pregnant anyways, but if you find yourself in a situation where you need to treat an animal for tapeworms, you're definitely gonna to wanna to avoid the valbazin during that first trimester. With that being said, we just don't use valbazin at all for our pregnant use or dose. We just feel that it's not worth the risk, and so we avoid it altogether. If you have to use a white wormer on a pregnant animal, we highly advise using Safeguard. We feel that it's not the best, uh, but it is the best option given the circumstances. So we talked about these wormers. We talked about uh, what was going on with the worm, how they get it, and we talked about using wormers, but I also said that these animals, you know, they may not show signs and symptoms of having tapeworm, so how do you identify if your animals have tapeworm? Sometimes you can identify it, sometimes you can't. Fecal samples are probably one of the least reliable ways to test your animals to see how much of a tapeworm load they have. The problem with the fecal samples is that some of your animals may be shedding, some of your animals may not. It's just not a very reliable way to tell if they have a tapeworm load and how much of a load they have. The reality is, is most of your little ones, you're going to notice in their stool, you're going to notice what looks like white grains of rice in their stool. These are those tapeworm segments that are in there that are packed full of eggs that are being shed from the body. That's probably the number one way that you'll see it. Every once in a while in an older animal, you may see a long tapeworm segment. Some of these tapeworm segments can get up to three meters long. So that's nine feet. That's a heck of a segment. It's pretty rare that you see one of those long stringy segments, but it is possible. More often than not, you're going to see these grains of rice um, that are in the stool. So that's what you want to look for. In all reality, we don't even look for it at all. We just worm our animals at weaning for tapeworms. We know that they're going to have it. We assume that they're going to have it. 
and so we just treat them for it. Now, with very, very good pasture management where they're traveling a lot and they're never on the same area twice for long periods of time, there is a chance that you may not have any tapeworms at all and you may be able to avoid this. However, I would say err on the side of caution, watch for it, see if you have signs and symptoms of it and just go from there. If you see it, chances are you have it. And in our case, even if we don't see it, we just go ahead and treat for it. It's a one-time treatment, it's easy, it's done and it's over with. And this way I don't have to worry about the nutrition that my animals are taking in going towards those parasites instead of going where it should be going. The other thing to consider about the subclinical tapeworms is, is these can knock these animals back and put them at a deficit and set them up for a more complex infection or infestation, be it with barber pole worm or other gastrointestinal bugs. It's just one more thing that can add to that puzzle that can set this animal up for failure that we just don't want to deal with. So again, at weaning, we treat with the valbazin and we just call it quits and we're done with it and we never treat them again. That's what we find works best for us. You'll have to determine if it works best for you. With that being said, I'm Tim from Lanessa Farms, specialty in heirloom livestock. Thanks for joining me again today and I look forward to seeing you again next time.